Jonathan here, one of the engineers over at NetBurner, and we are back for another exciting video. Today, we're going to continue our dive into the Mod M7 AE70 development kit. In this video, we're going to take a few seconds to review our carrier board, the Mod Dev 70CR, and look at some different ways we can configure it using the available jumpers. We'll discuss how we can power it, as well as how we can connect the device. Finally, we're going to fire up our module and make sure that we can actually see it on the network. Before we start plugging things in though, let's circle back around and take a few seconds to become more intimately familiar with the carrier board itself. We're not going to change anything from how it was shipped, but a quick review will help give us an idea of some different ways that we can power up and connect to the module. It will also help us ensure that everything is set correctly for this demo. When a development kit leaves our facility, the jumpers should be set like they are in this image. You will notice that JP1, JP2, and JP3 all have the jumper set to positions 1, 2. JP1 determines how our carrier board is powered. Since we are set to position 1, 2, we will use the USB port as our power supply. If we were to change the jumper to 2, 3, it will use the barrel jack instead. JP2 and JP3 dictate which serial port on the carrier board is used to monitor UR0. With the jumper set to position 1, 2, it will use the USB port to send and receive serial data. However, if we were to change it to position 2-3, it would use the DP9 port labeled UR0 on the carrier board instead. Now that we have verified the jumpers are set correctly, let's go ahead and connect our Ethernet cable to our carrier board. The inner end of this cable is plugged directly into a switch, as you can see here. This will allow the device to get an IP address automatically from our DHCP server. If you're able to do this, it's definitely the preferred method of working with your device. That said, if you are unable to plug your device directly into your network or don't happen to have a DHCP server running, there are some alternatives. Using static IP settings, it is possible to plug the module directly into your laptop. It's very easy to mess this up, however, and doing so will prevent your PC and module from being able to talk to one another. We'll cover this a bit more in a separate video just to make sure we give it the attention it really deserves. The next thing we're going to do is open an MTTTY serial terminal, or MIDI terminal as we affectionately call it here, and connect it to the PC port that is associated with the USB port. This will let us see the device boot up and we can keep an eye out for any issues that might occur along the way. With the Ethernet cable plugged in and our MIDI terminal ready to roll, let's go ahead and power this bad boy up. Now, when you see this serial data pop up on your MIDI terminal, you'll know that your device is booted properly. You may be thinking, well, that's all well and great, but this is a network-enabled device, right? How can I connect to my device over the network? That's a great question. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to solve, and there are a couple of options. At this point, we're going to open a browser and head to discover.netburner.com. This is a free web service we are running that will help find and display any NetBurner devices on your local area network that are running applications built with NetBurner's 3.0 tools or later. From this page, you can see the last time they were seen, reach any web pages they might be serving, as well as their configuration page. If you don't happen to see your device here, fear not. Check that port 20034 isn't being blocked by your network, as this is what our devices use to talk to our services and tools. Here's a fun fact for you. NetBurner actually registered this port back in 2003. You know, back when that was still a thing. Now, if you happen to be on a network that is not able to see the outside world, or you want to avoid the bureaucratic red tape that is sometimes associated with trying to open a port to the outside world, no worries. We have you covered. Included with the NEDK is an application that will let you run our discovery tool locally. You can find this tool on our website. A link to the application can be found in the comments below. Additionally, you can find the source code used with this application in your install directory under nburn slash pc tools slash local discovery. We provided a CPP version as well as a Go version. The one online is the compiled Go version. Now, for all of those conscientious security minded folks out there who might be a little bit antsy that their Nebuchadnezzar devices can be discovered on an internet tool, it is possible to change or completely remove the NetBurner's discovery functionality. This is set using the NetBurner's configuration system, and we'll cover that little tidbit in a separate video. You can also check it out on our online documentation found at netburner.com. We've also added a link to the documentation in the description down below. And now, to verify that our device is indeed up and running, let's click on that link and see what kind of web page our module is serving up. 
If it's straight from the factory, you should see a neat little demo application loaded. We can click on a few things here and verify that everything is responsive. Maybe try to win a game of tic-tac-toe. You're mine, mod M7870. Maybe next time. All right, that about wraps up this video. Thanks again for joining me. On our next video, we're gonna go ahead and cover how to build and load a new application onto our module. That way we can do all the nifty things we've ever wanted. See you then.